For today's special episode of Transform My Dance Studio, we are revisiting one of our most popular training series for dance studio owners. Of course, I'm talking about Dance Teachers Unite. Now, if you haven't heard of Dance Teachers Unite, don't worry. Over the coming weeks, I am going to be sharing with you the very best bits and golden ticket ideas from the 10-day online summit. During Dance Teachers Unite, Clint was joined by over 30 industry experts who share their greatest tips for dance studio owners on every aspect of your business. From mindset to finance, from digital marketing to administration overhaul, we have got you covered. Hey everyone, it's Clint Salter here, your host for Dance Teachers Unite for 2015. And today's all about overhauling the processes, the systems in your business, the administration, all of that stuff that I know you really, really enjoy. And I met this lady that we're going to speak to uh, last year at the Dance Teachers Summit. And I was like, you know what? I need to get her in front of the dance studio owners because she knows what she's talking about. She's built an amazing business. But not only that, she's really passionate about dance and training our young dancers of tomorrow. So please welcome our guest for today, Cindy Clow. Hi, Cindy. How are you? Hi, I am great. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. I'm really, really good. So Cindy, for those that don't know much about you or anything about you, can you tell our studio owners a little bit about your business and what's your big mission in the world? Well, our business is very unusual in that we basically are in 200 communities and we started in our basement, believe it or not. And we have grown substantially. And in a nutshell, what we are is we do all the choreography, the billing, and the advertising for our youth directors who we hire. They are employees of ours. So we take all the business side out of it, and they just get to teach the kids. And so, um, and we also do other things like summer camps. We have a mail order catalog. We have a t-shirt business. So it's kind of diverse. And we do a halftime at the Outback Bowl every year um, in Tampa. In wow. Tampa. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And so is that like a, is that a licensing model? Is it a franchising model? How, how does it work? Because a lot of our studio owners, like, you know, we've got programs, we'd love to maybe look at doing something like that. What's the model for your business? Our model is they are employees rather than, um, rather than having what you'd call a franchise. It's similar to a franchise, except that they have no upfront fees whatsoever. Mm-hmm. All they are out is their time. And so that is their big investment is their time. And we've had some of them start and not be able to do it. And then, but, but basically we give them all the tools to do it. If they're a go-getter, they should be able to do it. Yeah. You give them essentially kind of what we do in the program, you know, you give them a recipe and right. you know, like a business in a box. And if they can follow right. those exactly. steps, they're going to be able to have some success in that business. Yeah. Yes, I feel so. It's great. So I want to start by asking you, you've got a couple of different businesses. I've seen the clothing brand at the, at the yeah. different events that are going on and it's, it's a great brand. What do you think are the differences between someone who's running a, a thriving dance studio and someone who might be just surviving? What have you seen of those kind of distinct differences? Well, I think, you, I think it's important to step back from what you're doing and try to look at it from up above looking down on your business because sometimes we're so in the trees that we can't see the forest. And so I think the difference would be um, in our businesses that we've been able to, and and, and we have problems just like everyone else. In fact, we're, we're going through some transitions right now that we're trying to get, you know, wrap, trying to get a grasp on some things, but I think to always be analyzing, always be trying to improve, look at it from your customer's perspective. Um, But I think the great thing that we provide is that we know what dancers want. So in our businesses that we have, for instance, the t-shirt one, we know what's trendy. We know what's cool, what the kids want. And we can, we know how fast they need it. So sometimes we'll stay up all, have people stay up all night to get it ready for us, which is great. Yeah. And so you touched on there, the challenges, you know, and, and no one, no matter how successful you are as a studio owner, everyone goes through challenges because I think you get to one point and you're like, yes. And then you're like, oh no, now I'm going to climb the mountain again, you know? And we see it a lot with studios that maybe are hiring a space and then they decide to go into their own 
facility. We see it with people in a facility that outgrow the facility, oh, so yeah, need a bigger yeah. facility. Yeah. So what's your advice around navigating, uh, you know, navigating change and how do you navigate growth? Like what systems have you got in place to be able to help you, you know, make that process as easy as possible, although we know it's not easy? Right. It's never easy. Um, well, if you're thinking about a space, um, that you're, if you're talking in terms of trying to grow, if you've grown out of your space, I think you really need to run numbers before you get yourself into something that you can't afford. So you have to run numbers and be, be, um, conservative when you run them so that, you know, you can make your payments and make your bill, pay your bills. Um, I find that is most important is to look back, look ahead and, and make sure you're being realistic about your needs. Um, and sometimes you can rent for a while until you get, get ready to, you know, I've even been in two spaces in one community before because we weren't ready to make the jump and say you only needed three more classes a week. Sometimes you can rent somewhere for those additional hours so that you don't have that additional upkeep and, and, um, money going out. You, you, what you really want to look at is your bottom line. Are you making money? And, you know, we had an unfortunate summer this year, a bad example. We do camps all over and we had some new people in positions where some contracts got signed and we ended up working the whole summer, not really making any money because we were paying it all out to all our vendors and mm -hmm. colleges that we were at and universities. So you really want to make sure you're running your numbers and mm -hmm. not saying I always do it because I didn't in those cases, but, but you need to be looking at that. I think that's great advice because I, I was talking about this on a training yesterday. So many studio owners, you know, we go into it because we love teaching and we love dance and we love children. We don't love the numbers though. You know, when we get started, we are like, Hey, keep me away from those numbers. But yeah. I think to be able to have it, a, a business that is profitable that can bring in more people, you need to know those numbers. So you talked about, you know, knowing those numbers. If you're looking to go to a new space, what are the numbers you'd be looking at? Would you be looking at, okay, at the moment, you know, this month, month to month, this is kind of what we're making. Here are some different projections. Like, do you put different projections in place? Okay, if we got X amount of more new students through the door doing this activity, this is how much we would generate to be able to pay for that extra space. How do you, what's your kind well, of thinking? You, I think you first would start with how much does that space cost? How hmm. much is it going to cost you in terms of uh, the rent, the lights, the cleaning, all that type of thing. Snow removal, which is where, where I'm at. Snow removal is big. Um, you know, how much is it going to cost you? And it, it's really hard to project numbers, you know, because you don't know how many kids are going to walk through your door. So I would use existing numbers mm -hmm. and maybe go, how many new ones do you think you can get? And, and then, you know, there's times where you're not going to reach what you thought, and then you have to go back and try plan B. Now you've got the studio. How do you fill it? And that's a challenge. Uh, we did that in one of our communities. We put up a new building and we had been in many neighborhood areas. And when we moved into one consolidated, consolidated all of the little offshoots, some of the parents didn't want to travel across town. They liked it in their school or they liked it in their neighborhood. And so we thought, oh, we're building this beautiful studio. We're not going to, you know, now they're all going to come to us. Well, they didn't. So then we had to figure out plan B to recruit more students and get there. Mm, it's great. It's a, yeah. I think there's a lot of learning in all of those cool. things as well. Yeah, I call it the school of hard knocks and I've had lots of lessons. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure you have. How long have you been in business for? Since 1981, we will be having our 35th anniversary this season. You will. I was just working it out because I uh, turned 30 this year and I was born in 85. So I was like, hey, that, that's close. That's close. Yeah. To yeah. Wow. Congratulations. It's, Thank it, you. it's such a, um, an achievement. And I like how you've put it into perspective to say, you know what? I had challenges this year. Uh, so studio owners out there, there's always challenges, but, but that's part of growth. I always say growth never sits in comfort. I, I really agree. And I, you know, I teach a lot of coaches and teaching classes. And one of the things I, I talk about is, is expect some setbacks, expect some, you know, getting kicked in the stomach a few times, so to speak, because if you expect everything to just run along perfectly, uh, then, then that's when you, you're blindsided. So if you expect things to happen, then at least you'll be able to be resilient and land on all fours and, and come back kicking yeah. or tap. 
or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Cindy, I want to talk, you know, with that many staff, you know, that many employees, you must have a pretty amazing administration team in in your organization i mean what's the if you can tell us a little bit about the structure you know who who kind of does the admin you know the the database stuff um you know the financial stuff in the business and what are some of your tips for getting the right people into those roles well i'm reading a great book right now called traction Yes, and, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to the audio book of it. Oh, me too. And okay, <laughs> so we're, we're actually having a company meeting on September 1st and 2nd to maybe revitalize some things and change. Um, the big thing is having the right person in the right position and not always letting emotion get into it. And fortunately, with a business as big as ours, if we have trouble, like say somebody's not in their area of expertise, sometimes we can move them to a place where they're going to be more successful because everybody has so many different strengths. So I feel the key is to find the people that fit into the the position that you need. And you work with people a little while, you quickly find out, okay, they're a procrastinator. Or, okay, they're a go-getter. You know, you want to try to um, hire people with the traits that you need for a specific position. I really don't feel you can train people to be one way or the other. You can't teach, I mean, you can teach people your models and your goals, but people have to have a desire and a passion for what they're doing and they have to like it. I mean, I would not be able to do data entry all day for the life of me, but some other people would not be able to talk and develop what I do. So you have to find people that balance each other and that are good at what they do. Yeah. I don't know if that helps. Yeah. That's, you know, and, and I think that's really important. Do you use any testing? Like if you use the Colby test or, um, no, I'm bad that way. Um, no, we don't. Usually my best, bet for hiring is people that I meet um, and like, and I recruit in. Like I have one girl that just started in her office and woman, I should say, but I knew her when she was a a high schooler. So um, I I liked her energy. I liked her passion. We actually had two people that started in our office in June and they were former dancers that had either gone through our camp or had gone through our youth programs and liked just her kicks. And they had like a vested interest in what we do and a history with us. And I feel that's important, Mm. but personality is huge, especially in the dance world. You know, um, we always tease that we had one person come to our convention and she spoke very monotone and we, you know, and she goes, I'm, how do you help me grow my program? And, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'm trying to imagine you with the personality, you know, maybe having some energy. Because <laughs> I really feel it's about the passion, you know, when you're talking dance and your front desk or, you know, who's in front of your people, you need someone that when you meet them, they have passion and you can tell that they really are excited about what they're doing. And that I feel that's key for certain positions. I mean, obviously somebody that's, not with the, you know, if they're entering data all day, they don't really have to be passionate about it. They have to be detailed and meticulous and efficient, you know, so it depends what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. I I love that. I think that's really great. Great advice. Touching on the front desk, you know, you know, that front desk person, the person that's That's there in front of the customer greeting them. I hear so many stories of studio owners who, maybe have brought a family member in to run the front desk or hopefully not, but it could be a parent that's running the front desk. And we've all been, yeah. we've all been there. Look, I was there as well, you know, but they're not, you know, they might not be happy with them. You might, they might be like that office person that's got their head down and someone comes, you know, to talk to them and they don't look up, you know, or they answer the phone and they're angry or, you know, I had one client once that said to me, our front desk person just refuses to use email. You know, like, what do you, what do you look for in a, what are the qualities that you look for in an awesome front desk person? That's probably your number one consideration if you have a large studio where you can't be at the front desk, because that is the first line. That is the first person that everyone sees. You need a salesperson. You don't need someone who's just going to answer the question. You're, you need someone that's going to answer the question and then some. They're going to, you know, somebody comes in and asks about, you know, hip hop. By the time they're leaving, you got them signed up for ballet and lyrical and have you tried this. So you need a talker. You need someone that's 
exciting. I feel they have to look the part. Um, they have to be caring of kids because sometimes they're going to be dealing with bloody noses and band-aids and, you know, so they have to have a, a well-rounded personality and they have to deal with crabby moms sometimes. And we have a sign near our cash register that says there will be a $10 up charge for dealing with crabby and unreasonable people. Oh, to be, I love that. I love that. Funny. Yeah. And, you know, but so your front line, they have to be a salesman. And, you know, they have to be able to talk about different areas of the business too. For instance, in ours, we do a lot of cross marketing. So, you know, and you need to do that at your studio. You don't want to just say, here's the class. And I, um, another good book to read is Hug Your Customer. I can't even remember who wrote it, but it's a great book. And, and one of the things I read in there is, and it's coming true for me being in the business this long, is how you treat everybody in your waiting room and in your your studio will come back to you. What goes around comes around. And for instance, little brothers, they're going to grow up and have kids that want to dance. So mm. they're going to remember how you made them feel in the lobby. And it's exciting at this point in my career that I have uh, students of uh, students. I, you know, I'm starting to get on to, you know, where the grandma's in watching her grandchild now that I taught originally, you know, so that's kind of fun. Um, so, so just remember that your reputation in your community kind of getting off track, but with that same thing, your, your reputation to market your studio, that's your number one best thing is your reputation. You, you cannot, you can work so hard, so hard to build your studio, but people talk, especially in a small town and you want them saying good things about your studio and how you treat children. And I always ask myself, would I want my own child to be treated the way they're being treated here? here. And so all the people that you hire have to have your values and commitment to what you feel. And they have to, they have to buy into what you're saying. There are some, um, I think of a dance show on TV that shall remain nameless where they treat children different than I treat the children at my studio. I, my kids are good. We want to reach a high level, but we do it with coaching the total child and motivating rather than I call it um, transformational coaching rather than transactional. You're, I read a book on that too. Um, I love that. I love that. I love that concept. Yeah, it's from Joe Erdman. He's a football, a former football NFL. But it's about how you coach children um, to be in, you know, you want to inspire them rather than, you want to build their confidence rather than tear it down. So your reputation in your town is, is great. And, you know, one of the things we tell our directors is, you know, you can only burn through so many kids in your town. If, if they watch your drop rate, that's a number to watch. If you have so many kids sign up, but they don't, you don't retain them. That's a red flag. You're doing something wrong. So if you get them through your doors and you're not retaining them, you better figure out why, because you can only go through so many kids. Yeah. And, you know, we spend so much money advertising. You've got to treat your, your current clients great so that you retain them. And, I don't spend a lot of money advertising in the beginning. I didn't anyway. Now we do company wide, but I, we did it all in word of mouth and doing a great job. Yeah. And I think that's, it definitely does come down to, to your reputation. We know that it costs, you know, a studio owner about between five and ten, seven times more to acquire a new student than it does to retain an existing student. So I'm always talking about what are you doing to look after your family that's already there? Because everyone's crazy about new students. We need new students. We need new students. We need new students. I'm like, hey, you've got a great group of people already there. You've got a family of people that could be doing more classes. You could work on your frequency, you know, so, yeah, so you be doing more classes. Building in, yeah, that's building internally, which is important too. You don't just build with more students. You build what they're taking. And but also just, you know, on how you treat them. You got to create an environment that people want to be a part of mm. and where they're going to come back to. I had a great mentor that, that always told me people come where they're invited and they stay where they feel welcome. So how welcoming is your studio environment to, the, to all kids, not just the superstars, all yeah. kids. I hope you enjoyed one of our favorite moments from Dance Teachers Unite. If you'd like lifetime access to over 30 hours of these video masterclasses, make sure to check out www.dancestudioownersassociation.com.